All right, I want us just to look at the stages of knowing the revealed will of God or God's will of command. We just want to talk on that part. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, where it says, And be not conformed to the part of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might know that which is good, acceptable, perfect will of God. You know, the will of God requires a renewed mind. And it's only the Holy Spirit that can be able to do that. He can be able to give us that discernment that we need to know the revealed will of God or God's will of command in our life. So stage one, God's will of command is revealed with final decisive authority only in the Bible. So we need the real mind to understand and embrace what God commands in the scripture. Without a renewed mind, we will distort the scriptures to avoid their radical commands for self-denial and love and purity and supreme satisfaction in Christ alone. So God's authority will of command is found only in the Bible. Only in the word. The Bible says that he's honored his word above his names. So it's only found in God's word. Second Timothy 3 verses 16 to 17. All scripture is God breathed. That means given by divine inspiration. And is profitable for instruction, for conviction of sin, for correction of error and restoration to obedience, for training in righteousness, that is learning to live in conformity to God's will, both publicly and privately, behaving honorably with personal integrity and moral courage, so that the man of God may be complete and proficient outfitted and thoroughly equipped for every good work. Not just some good works, but every good work. Oh, what energy and time and devotion Christians shall spend meditating on the written word of God. Read it for yourself. And that's why I've taken initiative that even as I teach God's word, we look at his word. I mean, scripture interprets scripture. You know, there's nothing like man's philosophy. There's nothing like Solomon's philosophy here. Or my way of thinking. Scripture interprets scripture. That's why it is important to read the word of God for yourself. The word of God brings forth light. And understanding. So let not just... Wait for your pastor to go and prepare. It's good, important to listen to them, but be like the Bereans. You go back and read for yourself and find out what I was being told last Sunday during the midweek meetings. Is it true? I look from the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit will be able to minister to you. Because the Bible says, the Spirit of Truth will teach us all things. All things. Amen. Stage 2. Stage 2 of God's will of command is our application of the biblical truth to new situations that may or may not be explicitly addressed in the Bible. So we've read the word of God. But now secondly, applying it to new situation that may or may not be explicitly addressed in the Bible. So the Bible does not tell you which person to marry, for example. If you're a single person, when I was getting married, the Bible didn't tell me. You know, it's written there. True. Or which car to drive. Like, someone, I believe this car is meant for you. 
<laughs> no. Or whether to own a home or a house. The Bible does not tell you that. Or where to take your vacation. I mean, uh, I feel like you should go to such and such a place. It would be best for you. Or what cell phone to buy. What kind of mobile phone to buy. Or which brand of Jewish when you go to a restaurant to take. Or... You know, or a thousand other choices you must make. So what is necessary is that we have a renewed... So the battleground is here. It's the battleground. It's not born again. That's why the Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When the word of God comes in, I'm renewed. My thoughts begin to align themselves with the word of God. And as it they align themselves with the word of God. My body tends to act in that direction. But if it's controlled by my own philosophy or thinking, I'll find myself going astray or being distracted from fulfilling God's will and purposes in my life. And that's why I like this book of James. Where I like this. The book of James chapter 3 just speaks loudly. James chapter 3 verses, I believe, 17. Let's start from verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy, and self-seeking in your hearts. Do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above. Now listen to that. But it is earthly, sensual, demonic. It is just to the senses. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is not first pure. Pure thoughts. Peaceable. Gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. That's the kind of wisdom we need. And that's what I'm speaking about. So, so we, what is necessary is that we have a renewed mind that is so shaped and so governed by the revealed will of God in the Bible. Now we see and assess all relevant factors with the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, that which was in Christ, the mind of Christ, and discern what God is calling us to do. So this is very different from constant trying to hear God's voice saying, do this and do that. Like Samuel, when he was a toddler and God was speaking to him. People who try to live their lives by hearing voices are not in sync with Romans 12 verse 2. So there is a world of difference between praying and laboring for a renewed mind that discerns how to apply God's word. On the, other, on the one hand, and the habit of asking God to give you a new revelation of what to do. On the other hand, divination does not require transformation. God's aim is a new mind, a new way of thinking and judging, not just new information. His aim is that we be transformed, we are sanctified, set apart for his purpose, freed by the truth of his revealed word. Look at John chapter 8 verse 32. In John 17, verse 17, it says, I've combined them together. So Jesus was saying to the Jewish who had believed him, If you abide in my word, continually obeying my teachings and living in accordance with them, then, it says, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth regarding salvation. And the truth will set you free from the penalty of sin. 
Sanctify them in your truth. That is, set them apart for your purpose. Make them holy. Your word is truth. The word of God sanctifies. The word of God sets us apart to fulfill God's purpose. So the second stage of God's will of command is the discerning application of the scriptures to new situations in life by means of a renewed mind. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. The, the third stage, which is the final one, the third stage of God's will of command is the vast majority of living where there is no conscious reflection before we act. We don't reflect, we just find ourselves having acted. So I venture to say that a good 95% of your behavior, my behavior, we do not premeditate them. Most of our thoughts, attitudes, and actions are spontaneous. They are just spillover from what's inside. Spillover from what's inside. Look at Matthew chapter 12, verse 34 to 36. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For the tree is recognized and judged by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you speak good things when you're evil? For the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. The good man from his inner good treasure brings out good things. And the evil man from his inner evil treasure brings out evil things. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will have to give an account for every careless or useless word they spoke. For by your words, that is, reflecting your spiritual condition, you will be justified and acquitted of the guilt of sin. And by your words, rejecting me, you will be condemned and sentenced. So why do I call this part of God's will of command? One, for one reason. Because God commands things like don't be angry, don't be prideful, don't covet, don't be anxious, don't be jealous, don't envy. And none of those actions are premeditated. No, you don't. Just like, I want to be angry. You can't say that. It's a spillover. I want to be anxious. I want to envy. No, it's a spillover. I want to be proud. Anger, pride, covetousness, anxiety, jealousy, envy, they all just rise up out of the heart with no conscious reflection of or intention. And we are guilty because of them. They break commandment of God. Is it not plain therefore that there is one great task of the Christian life? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We need new hearts. We need new minds. Matthew 12, 33. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit but for the tree is recognized and judged by its fruit. So that's the great challenge. That is what God calls you and I to do. You can't do it on your own. I can't do it on my own. We need Christ who died for our sins. And we need the Holy Spirit to lead us into Christ's exalting truth and to work in us. Truth embracing humility. Give yourself to this. Let us give ourselves to this. Let us immerse ourselves in the written word of God. Let's saturate our mind with it and pray that the Spirit of Christ will make us new to that spillover. And our spillover will be good, acceptable, perfect, the will. And Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that the word of Christ will dwell in us richly. Richly. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. 
reach me. Reach me, as Lord. That's our prayer. Chapter 3, verses 16. Let me just start from verse 12. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, that will be able to put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has complained against another, even as Christ forgave us, so we also must do. But above all things, we shall put on love, which is the bond of perfection. That the peace of God will rule in our hearts, to which also we were called in one body. And be thankful. We will let the word of Christ to dwell in us richly, in all wisdom, in all teaching, admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in our hearts to the Lord. And whatever we do in word or deed, we will do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Amen.